I was surprised to, to find out how many people have no clue on how to read a map. How many people have no clue where north or south or east or west are today? It's amazing. And further, how many people have never learned how to use a basic magnetic compass? Especially in the days where today everyone is spoiled by the use of GPS navigation. So th this channel in your defense is for practical preparedness. And one of those ideas has to be, do you really know how to get from one place to another without electronic support? Or even if you have electronic support, how do you validate that you're going in the right direction to the place that you intend to be? In front of you are three examples. Uh, two of them, this one and this one, are magnetic compasses. And I'll be focusing on those two. The center, of course, is a handheld GPS and a lot of information different kinds of maps, tracking your path over the ground and speed and those kind of things, a GPS makes it very easy. The problem with that is how do you know how to navigate and orient yourself if you run out of batteries or the GPS system goes down, which has happened, or you lose access to the inboard maps. And this is especially true if you're using your cell phone as a GPS, because if your data link goes down, you lose all of your mapping, unless you thought ahead of time and have downloaded it into your phone. And then all you get is a, a black dot on a white background and you have no clue where you are. For the purposes of this video and subsequent videos, because I plan on doing a series on uh, basic practical land navigation, I'll be focusing on how to navigate using a topographical or topographic map. Uh, and this is an example of one, uh, and these are available for around the world. Uh, but I won't be talking about how to read one of these today. It's just the idea that in order to successfully navigate, uh, you'll need to have some device and I'm going to focus on the need for a magnetic compass. There are basically two types of magnetic compass available. One is called a base plate, which is represented by this Suntu M3. It's called a base plate because it lays flat on the surface and you would have to have it in your hand with your hand flat. So this is a base plate type compass and they're very popular and this is a Suntu, S-U-U-N-T-O. Today they're made in China but they're from Finland originally and this particular one I've had for maybe 15 years and uh, this one was in fact made in Finland. Um, so this is a base plate type the other type is the lensatic. Lensatic because it has a lens and it has a fold up portion here that you look through and sight through and sight down through the lens onto the compass rose. Um, this particular model is what's issued to every <laughs> soldier, sailor, marine, and airman, and coastie uh, in the US military and NATO. The, this particular type I had when, when I was in the Army back in uh, 1960, late something or other. I'm not going to give you all of that. But this thing is absolutely indestructible. Now, this was designed for the military. This was designed primarily for civilian uh, adventure, hiking, orientation um, uh, use. I prefer this because it is much more robust, it's reliable, and it's a lot easier and, and more accurate uh, than this one over time. Uh, I'll talk about some of the features of this that I like 
and a feature of this that a lot of people do like. Uh, but primarily, these are the two types of compasses that you will find available. This one is about twice as expensive as this one. Now, there are, this particular one is made by Kamanga. That's the company that makes them for the U.S. military, and it's exactly the same model that's available to civilians. Um, if you take a look at this compass, the Sun 2, what you will see in the compass face is a bubble. Now, the, these compasses are filled with liquid and almost always they end up with a bubble and the bubble affects, and this is over time, the bubble affects the accuracy and sometimes can significantly affect the movement of the needle. Uh, I discovered that bubble about three, four weeks ago when I was taking this out to do this video. Uh, so while I will keep this as an emergency backup tool, because you don't want to throw good stuff, you know, stuff away if you don't have to, this is not going to be my go-to compass. This is now my go-to compass. Um, there are supposedly on YouTube ways to get the bubble out. I have not found one that's useful here. Uh, so I just don't want to throw it away. What good thing about this for those who, where it matters is this has the ability to adjust for magnetic deviation. That's the difference between true north and magnetic north on maps. And this little key here, let me see if we can put it up. This little key here is a little t wrench that makes the adjustment and the adjustment comes from looking at the topographic map, which we won't get into uh, at this point. So this is a base plate uh, compass. This is a lensetic compass. So let me talk about a couple of things on this. One, as I said, is completely almost indestructible. Uh, this is the lens. And this is the sighting aperture. I'm going to do it this way. This is a little easier to deal with. But you sight through like a rifle sight. The uh, wire lined up in there on the object that you're going to navigate to. And then you look down through the lens and you find your compass heading. Um, the other good thing is that, and this is not liquid filled. It has a different type of, uh, of motion of action to keep the uh, stability of the compass rose. Now watch what happens when I lower the, the lens. It automatically locks the compass rose in place so it won't shake around when you're in a Jeep or doing horseback riding, whatever you're doing. The other thing is because this is lensatic, this is designed for your thumb to go in there and make a fist. And this gives you stability. So if you're used to shooting, it's almost the same grip to sight on a particular object. Uh, these are the things that I found that I really liked about the Lincetic Compass when I was in the military. And I use it a lot. Um, and I had to be able to find one and it was hard to find. Now today, uh, in these days, uh, back in the day, the, if for night you had to shine a light on it and this was phosphorus. There is still a phosphorus face for this and it's less expensive, but I prefer tritium. Now tritium is what lights up my watch at night. Uh, you can get T25, which is the lowest level, and T100, which is what this is. T100 you can see across a room and it has its own internal radioactive light for each one of these points. And the same is true on this compass. Each one of these points is lit by tritium so you don't have to shine a light on it at night. It's very bright and helps you navigate at night if that's something that you want to do. Now let me caution 
caution you about cheap knockoffs. You get what you pay when it comes to uh, compasses, especially it's a tool that you're going to have to depend on and that you should depend on. Do not depend on the little stupid compasses that are on the end of walking sticks or on some clip on thing for your watch band. That is, they're a waste of time and they will get you in serious trouble. If you want to have something to navigate with that you can rely on, get one of these. Um, and there are knockoffs or cheaper versions of each one of these type. You need to stay away from them, which is why I put these two brands out there. The Sun 2, this is an M3, and this is the Kamanga uh, tritium based compass, lensatic compass. And this one is about 30 bucks more expensive than this version. But in my view and from the use that I want, this is something that, uh, that I have. Now, one, one comment. Again, this was made for the military. So the compass rows, the numbers on the compass rows would be a little different. They would have a little bit more information because <laughs> it needs to be very, very, very accurate because uh, ground people and some are going to be calling in artillery and airstrikes based on the readings from this. And then I'm using slightly different uh, slightly different measurements and angle so those are available on here in addition to the normal civilian stuff that you will see on the Sun 2. Uh, since none of us are going to be calling artillery anytime soon you don't need to worry about that. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, you should invest in a good compass. These are the two types. These are the two basic brands. This is the one I prefer. You make your own decision based on your use. So with that, thanks for watching. Carry on.